Welcome back. My name is Jay Siemens and today we're going ice fishing. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to put more walleyes on the ice. One of my favorite techniques to maybe even double your catch. But today we got Brandon, editor Brandon. Um, he's coming out fishing today. So I decided to let him out of the editing jungle, dungeon, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're headed on Lake of the Woods. We're going to head on the ice roads. But I have a very special stop to make first. And uh, hopefully this will get some of you guys involved. But I don't want to ruin the surprise. Guys, we have a bundle of rods. Before we go fishing, I want to do a little giveaway, and this is going to be interactive. I'm going to film an Insta story, and I'm going to hide my rods behind this buoy over here, and it's going to be a little treasure hunt. We're right near town, just off the ice roads, and we just got a big, a big mess of rods here. This is um, a little bit of everything. These are some of the rods I started ice fishing with, and they're still completely good. There's nothing wrong with these. Just for a little history, this is my first ice rod ever. HT, I think this is a 24 inch. What else do we have here? This rod. I caught my first Lake of the Woods lake trout ever. Just some good memories in these rods and uh, didn't really want to bother selling them. I thought I'm gonna give them back to you guys. So I'm gonna get my phone out. You guys are gonna see a little behind the scenes. If they don't get picked up, we're gonna pick them up on the way back home, but here we go. What's going on guys? We're doing a little, a little giveaway today and this is really only good for people in Kenora. So you gotta study this background very closely and you gotta see if there's any, anything that you might be able to match up. Thank you guys for all the support, for following along. Hopefully you get yourself a new ice rod. We're gonna cover them up a little bit here. Wow, this is cold. Is there anybody watching us? <laughs> all right, next time you see us, we will be a little further down the lake in search of some Walters. Look at this. <laughs> that was incredible. That was so good. Travel conditions are just minty. Brandon made out in the CRV. We're gonna get Brandon popping some holes. I'm gonna film a little slow mo. We're gonna set a couple tip ups out. I fish pros to be exact. And that's gonna be the topic of today's video. As I mentioned, how to ice more walleyes. And the way to ice more walleyes is to use your second line and to spread out. So often we're sitting on our shacks. We're jigging one rod, we have our second rod right beside us, and we're fishing just a tiny piece of, sometimes a big piece of structure. So today we're gonna break that down, but first we're gonna get a couple lines set up. All right, we got two lines set. You're allowed two each in Ontario. So we're gonna set two more. And this is what we're using. It's called an iFish Pro. It's my buddy Levi on there. Super cool devices. Essentially what it is, well, I'll, just, I'll open this one up. I've talked about this in my guide to uh, guide to tip ups, but this is a tip up that lets you use your rod. And, and the jaw jacker, which you've seen in many videos is fantastic and it automatically sets the hook. In some areas, it's not legal. I've been getting so many questions about it being legal in Manitoba and Ontario. It is legal the jaw jacker is legal uh the wording how the wording works in the regulations is uh no spring loaded devices uh the jaw jacker uses the bend of the rod not actually a spring loaded external device so they're good to go but that being said i don't like jaw jackers for bigger walleyes i like jaw jackers for stock trout i think the ifish pro is the best when you're doing big pike uh big walleye some bigger baits that you want the fish to just have a second with it so this device will sit over your hole. So this can fit over a 10 inch hole. This is the new 2.0 version, so it's insulated. This has some foam in there. I'm gonna talk about the clips and you know the, the, the mechanism to actually trigger it later. But first we're gonna start with the business end and what our options are for hooks. So there's kind of two options in my mind. Your octopus hooks. I like a size four to a size eight if I'm using an octopus hook right there. Great for small minnows. But something that I've seen other guys do, and I haven't done it myself yet, but we're probably gonna try today with some of the bigger minnows, is we're gonna try a small treble hook. So this is a size eight, and uh, it just has a couple more hooking points to potentially get that fish. Sometimes that small hook can be tough. So on the business end, this is a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. You could definitely go down to eight or six for more pressured fish, but I'm gonna tie it with a uni knot right there. Next thing we're gonna do is clip these split shots on. And these are just little clip-on lead weights. It's nice soft lead, so it's easy to pinch on your line. Once again, I should be using pliers for this. I'm gonna use my teeth. Shout out to Lakeside Dental for fixing my teeth. Here's something else to take into account. 
where you peg your split shot is gonna give the fish more or less freedom. So if you peg your split shot very close to the hook, that fish is gonna, it's gonna be more like what a jig does. It's gonna not give that fish very much freedom. If you move that split shot six, 10, 12 inches further away, that fish can now swing in a big radius. He can get away, with the, get away from the fish a little bit more. So depending on the fish's mood and what you might wanna do, that might determine how you wanna peg it down. I think if the fish are aggressive, you may wanna have that split shot a little further away. If the fish are in a tougher situation and they, they don't wanna chase as hard, I'd move that split shot closer to the hook so it doesn't have as much freedom. Okay, now we're gonna talk about what's gonna be going above the leader. So right here, we have our braided line to our fluorocarbon leader. That's eight pound braid to a 12 pound floral leader. Now we need a bobber stop and that's how we're gonna adjust the depth and set the depth for our iFish Pro. So I have some dacker on here. You could use a, a, an actual bobber stop. Right here I have some, some tip up line. This is probably 80, 100 pound test. All I'm gonna do is cut a little chunk off and I'm gonna tie it on the braid right here. I'm gonna just tie a uni knot. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tie it on the uni knot. It's important you tie it onto your main line and not your leader. So there I've got that. Cinch it down, I'm gonna trim these tag ends because they're gonna be a pain as it is. So right there, this little knot will slide up and down our line, that right there, and that is how we're gonna adjust our depth. So now you've got this clip. And this clip right here, I could have put on my line beforehand, but the problem is, is sometimes this uni to uni knot, depending on what size line you're using, right now it might slide through, but it might not slide through that hole right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna put a little notch in the side. And that way, if for some reason it's not sliding over that knot, I can just pull that clip over when Brandon's fighting the fish or he can pull it off for me. And you don't have to worry about this getting stuck because this is actually what will help trigger the flag. So I'm gonna take this knife and this is gonna be kind of dirty, but I'm just gonna cut a little notch into the side. So now it's gonna slide in there and that's what's gonna stop it right there. But you know what, let's, let's set this up at a hole. I like tail hooking them, gives them a little more freedom. But right there, I'm probably gonna add another split shot just so the fish doesn't swim around too, too much. I like using a flasher for a situation like this because then you can get it just inches from the bottom. I can see more detail in this than I, I think I can in my live scope, especially when I'm zoomed in near the bottom. Uh, yeah, let's go set up line number three. All right, so we're scooping out the hole. Um, obviously it's a really warm day today, so it wouldn't be a big deal, but scooping it out down to the ice and then kind of packing it in nicely is a good way to just insulate it a little bit better. So as I'm letting it down now, the little stopper that I made, I'm gonna keep sliding it as I go because that's how I'm gonna mark my depth. So right now, I'm just holding that because there's a bit of tension on it and I'm gonna just hold it as I slide down. All right, so what I like to do on a, on a cold day or most days is I like to clear down the snow at least somewhat. If you can pack it down tight and even pack a little snow around it, it won't freeze nearly as quick. And I mean, if it's wicked cold, I don't think you should be using these outside. I think you should keep your lines inside, but on a moderately cold day, you know, if you can pack it in, it'll be just that much longer between you having to check the flag and, and clear the ice out. Cause if it freezes, then you're dealing with another situation. So I'm just getting near bottom here. All right, that's good. We're about less than a foot off bottom. I'm gonna pull that transducer out and here. I'm gonna show you the actual mechanism part of it. And you're gonna fold that flag down and depending on how sensitive you want it, as far back or as close to the lip as you want. If it's windy, you don't want obviously the wind to knock it right there. That's super sensitive. Since we got a bigger bait, I'll probably put it, you know, one notch in. The minnow's good. I can tell that everything's kicking. And now here's what I want to check. So now I'm watching the line and I'm making sure there's no obstructions. I'm making sure there's no ice chunks pegging this line down, making sure my bail is open. Cause when that flag pops, I want that fish to be able to free spool and take line. And that's the beauty of the iFish Pro is because normally with a tip up, you're fighting hand over hand. Now you get to fight it with your rod and reel. And as far as rods go, um, you don't want a pool cue. You want something with a nice, slow parabolic type bend. Because with these small hooks, you don't you don't need a stiff rod. You're not working a jigging bait or something. You want to just keep those fish pinned once you have them hooked. So uh, I think on those two, we have the Drench, which is a 39 light. On this one, we have the 37 medium light, the Royal Flush. I don't know. I mean, depending on what you're fishing for. For walleyes, you don't need a big reel. You can get away with a thousand size reel. I've seen people spooled with smaller reels when they're fishing for pike and for laker. So keep that in mind when you're doing your setup. So one, two, three, four. And that's kind of the point I want to get across is like spread out. You know, it's so it's so easy to, to clump up on one spot. And obviously on a cold day, it's a little bit tougher because you know, you need to stay in the shack. But when you're able to, when you can spread out, it just increases your odds because if there's fish sliding up on the hump over there or fish sliding up on the hump over there, you're, you're targeting different fish with your lines. It's a nice relaxing way to fish as well. If you have kids that, you know, don't have the attention span, younger kids and they want to catch fish, this is such a good way. Put out two dead sticks for them. Put out two, two tip-ups, whatever. If you don't have an iFish Pro, put your rod on a pail. 
whatever it might be, right? That means it's prime time and I'm just waiting for the first flag. Ain't that right? Right. <laughs> I'm ready for a flag. Any time now. Flag. Pop. Bruh. Things are good, absolutely stunning weather. Not needing to use the shack, just makes everything so much easier. And I've been getting pictures from you guys that you're grabbing the rods. Shout out to everyone that got rods, everyone who uh, passed up on them that could have taken them. It's cool, I'll do some more, do some more giveaways. As we wait for the flags, here's two other little accessories that can be handy. This is like a little depth finder. This is a little clip on lead weight. And basically you could clip that onto your hook before you put a minnow down and you could set your bobber stop that little piece of Dacron wherever you want it. So you, you don't even need a flasher for this. As long as you're near the bottom, that's kind of key. So you clip this on, set your depth, pull it back up, unclip it. Obviously you don't want to fish with this on there and then put your minnow on. And then the other piece, some bells are very nice if, uh, if you're inside of the shack or whatever at night and you can't see. The other thing is reflective tape or you could put some lights on. I know there's like a Bluetooth alarm system that you can get to send alerts to your phone. Just a couple accessories. I know these bells are super handy whenever I'm fishing in the shack. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep waiting. Oh, I think we're gonna have to come back and do this again. I'm not giving up hope on tonight. I think we could still get a fish or two, but I feel like we may have to come back to do this justice. Like it is so good. And the last two, three times I did this, I got so many flags and was catching some of my best fish on the tip ups, but I don't know. I don't I don't like these these clear skies, bluebird days, I don't know. Guess we'll set this camera back on the pail. Oh, flex, flex, flex. Yes, flex. yes, yes, yes! It's go time! It's go time! Okay, he's, yeah, you can just reel into him. Yes! Yes, Brad, it is hooked up! Oh, we worked hard for that one, we sat around. Okay, left, left, just walk back. It's dinner! <laughs> that one's coming home. You did it, Brandon. Woo! I'd hoping you the whole time. You can eat that one? Yeah, it's going home with me. <laughs> Into the deep fryer. Into the deep fryer. Wow, we waited a while. All right, I'm gonna set this back up and we got dinner. Oh, sweet. The sun has faded and so has our hopes of crushing a walleye, but that is okay. We'll come back. This video is not done. That's all I got. This is like crazy. It's like plus one. And this is the craziest part of all this is I forgot my boots. I'm in my sneakers right now. Normally I change into them when I get out to the lake and I completely forgot them, but uh, you know what? It's it's gonna be okay. It might get cold during prime time, but we got Brandon drilling the holes. Yeah, we're fishing. Fishing a new hump today, not too far from the other hump. And yeah, we're just kind of doing our spread. We got our central location here. We're setting one, two, three, four tip ups out there. We're gonna hang out in the middle and yeah, we're not we're not gonna talk too much. We did all the talking last time. Now it's hopefully just gonna be some fish catching. Stay tuned. All right, the flags are flying today. We can't even get all four set up. Brandon is hooked up. I'm out of breath. We can't get all four lines set. <laughs> Come on, baby. I think it's gonna be a decent walleye. Nice walleye. Nice walleye. Oh yeah. There nice. We go. Brandon's on the board. What do you think? We're gonna do better than last time? Oh yeah. We can't I, even <laughs> we've just been running around the whole time. We're gonna keep that guy for dinner. Perfect eater. Sweet. That's good, dude. We've had some good action right away. All right, we got all four flags set. Nice little spread. We got our home base in the middle. We moved our trucks out of the shot so it looks a little prettier. It is 228. So we got probably three hours of light left. So, yeah. Flag, flag, all right, Brandon, make it count. Ooh. Brandon's hooked up. All those hours of editing are paying off. <laughs> He's gonna be rewarded with a 14 pound walleye. Nice. And there we go. Number two. Brandon's eating good tonight. Boom. Awesome. Done. Can't keep up. Just shredding line. Really? All right, here we go. 
Ooh, and it's off. Oh. Right, we gotta get the other one set. Things are happening. <laughs> Man, it's some good action, boy. Ooh. 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 I like. Ooh, look at this sunbeam. Oh, you look glorious. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh, that's in the rod tip now. Just hand bomb him. Oh, he popped off. No! no! Oh, so close to the hole, too. All right, we gotta set up a new one. That's all right. Flags are popping. The kid's gonna be a good fisherman one day. Just kidding. He's great. Oh, it's bending. Ooh, nice. All right, take two. Same fish, who knows? Yeah, doesn't look that big. No, it doesn't. Hey, nice. little saw guy. Saw guy or saw Sauger. <laughs> Brandon the biologist. You can tell us I got back. Beautiful, nicely done. There he goes. It's been good, we're gonna burn out of all of our minnows. We need a airplane delivery from Sunset Baits. That'd be ideal right now. Flags keep flying. This is good. Oh, another one! Another one! Oh, we can't keep up. Yes. Okay, what do we got? Oh no, you did it again. Did it again. Come on. That's lunch. Boom. Perky dorsal. Happy walleye. This is good, it's not even prime time. Who knows what's gonna happen? Boom. 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 Ba. Blue. Ba. Do. 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 No. Something <laughs> about walleye. Another thing I will say with tip ups, it's just good to, it's good to monitor them. I mean, as much as it's just set it and forget it, especially on colder days, you just wanna check and you wanna make sure the mechanisms are free and there isn't anything goofy happening. Cause I've seen it before where your tip up freezes down when you're using conventional tip up and the fish has been peeling line, peeling line, peeling line and your spring was frozen with a little bit of slush. So it's just like, just do your cycles every once in a while, check your flags. That's what we're gonna do right now. And I'm just gonna, you know, give every minnow a little shake. I've, I've had burbot eat my bait and just sit in the same spot for 20 minutes and you didn't know until you checked and you could feel a lot of weight, so. Yeah, here we go, doing a little check. Well, it's been a while without a flag, but we're back in the game. Feeling good. Sun is about to hit the trees and hopefully we get a feeding frenzy. Oh, 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 oh. oh. All right. Yes. Let's go. He's on. Stay pinned. Hand bombing him the last little bit. Wow, that that was it's small. <laughs> Brad, it's all tangled up. I'm all tangled up. Nice. All right, flags are still flying. Activity's picking up. Time to grab another minnow. We're kind of running low. All right, what have we got? Is he still on? That's the question. Yep. Small. Small. <laughs> oh, popped up at the hole. Oh, we got another flag. We got another. The other got one went flag. up. The other one up. <laughs> I just set that one. All right, you're not allowed to lose this one. Oh, he's not getting slack at all. Yes. Flags are flying, prime time, baby. This one wants to play a little bit. Nice. This one's a trouble, I'll get anything to stay on. Nice. nice. Sun setting. Boom. We found some gold. Beautiful. Prime time all alive. All right, we got to reset some tip ups. That was busy. My toes are getting cold. The problem with those red bobber stops, why you see us uh, you know, fidgeting with them sometimes, essentially 
if you have too thick a line, it doesn't slide through there. So there's kind of two options. You can either pop that red clip off and that's how the design used to be and you lose a bunch. Or uh, if you have a thin enough diameter line or maybe a different knot, maybe an FG knot would be a little bit smoother. We're using a uni to uni, that might be the reason why it's not. If you were using straight fluoro, straight mono, you wouldn't have any issue at all. And I, I think maybe in hindsight for future rigs for this, I would just do straight straight fluoro, straight mono, um, because you know sensitivity isn't isn't important. The fish is just peeling the line and then you wouldn't have to deal with that line to line knot. Always learning, always tinkering, and maybe just using a shorter leader so you don't have to worry about that red stopper sliding over, but it's my spiel. Toes are getting, toes are getting cold. Hold an, heard an old rumor that pacing around the hole seven times triggers a fish. Seven times? Seven times. Exactly seven, no more than seven. They're hooked up. Things are frozen. Oh boy, things are frozen. We're just backing it up. We're just backing it up. Come on. Come on. Oh, yes. Amazing. Chow that minnow. We're gonna give him a little dunk and I'll give you a look. Sun setting. It's pretty funny when it pops right in front of you. Yeah, there's a lot of water running down my sleeve right now. Oh, we got a flag. I got a flag! We're hooked up. It's small, but the bite is on fire. And we're just gonna lift. Beauty. Perfect. Gorgeous sunset behind us. Now that I've played around with treble hooks a little more, I think I like using a small treble hook. A little treble hook pops right out. And we're doing it. The bite is on. Is that flag up? Or am I seeing things? That might be up. Yeah, I think it's a fish. All right, see if the fish is still in there. We're just gonna feed them a little bit. Wow, this has been good action. We are hooked up with another one. Everything's freezing up. I think this is gonna be our last fish of the night. It's a small one. It's a small one. It's a baby. <laughs> and it's going back. This has been fast action. Oh, oh. There she goes. <laughs> we got her a loose shot. Sun's setting. We're not even going to reset this. We got some all out to eat. We got a couple of flags that might pop up yet while we're cleaning up. Flags flying non stop, nothing big. But, you know, even if you're jigging one active rod, spread out a little bit. Use that second iFish Pro tip up. A rod on a bucket, whatever you have access to, definitely gonna catch you more walleyes, lake trout, pike, whatever you're doing. Take advantage of that. That was a fun day. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the ice very, very soon. Boom. <laughs> Got a flag! <laughs> We were cleaning up. Oh, he is on. This fish brought to you by Honda CRV. Just walk her back. Things are frozen. Oh, nice walleye. Boom! <laughs> that was a good ending. <laughs>